Um, but if you are a child, you can feel powerless that the people making the decisions on your behalf, frankly, won't be around to see them come to fruition. Um, that's why children from around the world have written letters to political leaders, urging them to act on their behalf. And those letters have been made into a book by Anglia Ruskin University, as Theo Chikumba reports. Imagine this, you are a child. You know that if the governments around the world don't act on the climate emergency now, your future will be full of fires, floods, food shortages and danger. Just one plastic bottle could take up to one million years to decompose, and yet huge amounts of plastic are being dumped into the ocean. Those extracts from letters addressing climate change were written by children from across the world, then published and illustrated by students here at Anglia Ruskin. I've mostly been doing illustration for sustainability in agriculture and then living on a farm myself at home. It's been nice to kind of draw on my own experiences about sustainability in food and particularly like sustainability and how we're farming and what we're farming and supporting local farmers with produce and buying local food. So it's really interesting. Depicting how the world looks now, this student focused on what we could see if significant changes are made in deprived parts of the world. So there was a child in India who was talking about um, jobs being like outside of their village now because of crops failing. Um, and there's been a lot of jobs or new jobs being made because of renewable energy, like um, wind farms and other sources. So it's not only positive for the planet, but it can create new jobs for areas which are um, more struggling with poverty. Others use the opportunity to show how better infrastructure can improve the environment. I looked at energy and it was um, from a letter written by a child in India. And um, I basically looked into trying to evolve into new, cleaner ways of energy, such as solar power, and using them instead of using industrial and things that harm the environment more. For years, Alad, an academic at the university, has worked with world leaders on sustainability. Alongside his colleagues, they wanted to give youngsters a chance to be heard. We had some really heartfelt letters from various people around the world in India who'd already experienced crop failure and drought in their villages, uh, people in Australia who'd already experienced fires and drought, um, but also people who looked to the future and, and could see actually a change in the change of the way they would live, a change in the technologies they would be using. So it was a bit, a bit, of, um, a bit of desperation that came out in some of the letters, but also quite a lot of hope, and that was quite nice to see. The message is clear, giving world leaders plenty to contemplate about the survival of the planet. The Age Combo, Beeps Lick East. Well, we heard at the start of Theo's report there from Freya, and I'm very pleased to say she's here with us tonight. Um, Freya, you want people up at COP26 to act, not just talk about climate change, but why did you want to write this letter? Well, I wanted to write the letter because it was a way for my voice to be heard, to maybe make them listen, and that's not often given to children, really. And climate change is not something that you've all of a sudden started thinking about because of COP26. You've actually met government ministers about this, haven't you? Yes, um, I met Michael Gove uh, with some other uh, children from around Cambridgeshire, the Cambridge Schools Eco Council, um, a few years ago. Um, and I've always really been passionate about the environment. Um, it partly stems from seeing an image uh, in First News, a children's newspaper, about a debate that was happening about climate change in the House of Commons and barely anyone was there. And then I realised the government aren't doing enough and they're not going to stop this and stop climate change or at least reduce its effects if we don't act. Well, a lot of people at home are watching this programme. What could we all do, do you think, to help this process? I think we all need to have two things in the forefront of our minds. One, do I need to do this? Like, do I need to go on a cup if I can ride a bike or walk? Do I need to buy this thing if I have plenty already? And also, we need to think, how is this going to affect the environment? Is this going to have a massive impact on the environment or even just a small one that's unnecessary? And if so, maybe we don't do that. It's a lot of food for thought. And just in the last 10 seconds or so, Freya, do you feel that people of my generation and older have let you down? Partly, yes, I think... I think probably yes, because I think my generation, it deserves 
a future and it deserves uh, being able to live on this planet. And that's not really going to be given to us unless we act now. Well, Freya, you wanted your voice to be heard. I'm sure it has been. Thank you ever so much for joining us tonight. Um, we just